Hello guys and welcome to a new Star Division 2 video today by me Balkan. In this video I have for you game 1 of a best of 3 between Yuri and Mamil in the semi-finals of the Division 1 Season 10 playoffs of the Star Division 2 League. Today they are playing on Shedrin and on our left in the red team we have Yuri playing with CIABG with the Juggernaut deployment type on the allied side and on the right hand side in the blue we have Mamil playing on the Axis side with the 17th SS Panzergrenadier and the Juggernaut deployment type. So unfortunately no attack power joining me today so it's actually back to solo casting uh, for this semi-final which is going to be interesting. Uh, these two divisions are quite interesting, CIABG being the Czechoslovakian division that came out more recently full of Cromwells, nice speedy units, has lots of spammable infantry and also can back itself up with some reasonable aircraft. On the side of Mimil, we got the 17th SS. That's more of your generic high tier German division that's been around for a long time. It has Stugs, has decent infantry in the form of the SS Legionary. It has lots of Nibblewerfers, so we'll have to wait and see if those are used throughout today's game. Let's have a look at what's going down. On the left side here we have Yuri using the Daimler and the FO Fusiliers. He's got some Geniste and the Fusiliers leading the charge with another Daimler there and a Churchill 7. Further down we have the Daimler, two Cromwell 5s, two Geniste and the uh, Fusiliers. And on the very bottom side it's going to be more Geniste. These are Flamer units by the way. Uh, Cromwell 5 and uh, two Crusader AAs on this bottom side. Interesting with the Vickers HMG and uh, the Fusiliers at the back. On the side of Mimil, at the start we've got a Pioneer Führer leading the charge in the Traction. We've got the Flammenwerfers, there's going to be the Volksdeutsche with the Panzergrenadier Legionary there as well. Stug at the back. That's 233, going to be moving up onto the hill with the Legionary and the Volksdeutsche. And on the bottom side, it's going to be the Pioneer Führer, SBW233, MG42, uh, Legionaries, Volksdeutsche, the Aufklader, and the Flak 36, 37 mil. So, no aircraft at the start, which is interesting because both players bought AA at the beginning. But Mamil here going to be having the benefit of these two 3-3s. They are incredibly good early game recon units that can smash like units like these Vickers HMGs and kill off the Daimlers. The Daimlers, they have limited uh, damage. They won't be out. They'll have to two shot the 233, whilst the 233 can in fact one shot the Daimler with its eight damage. So in the recon matchup, uh, the 233s, if they can get their first shot on target, uh, which might not happen because their accuracy is relatively low, uh, but if they can, then they will get the kill. Cromwell 5's coming up to this mid push, supported by the first Fusiliers and the Geniste, will certainly be a nice push. And something that you will want to do as Yuri on this map, this road does allow you to get onto this hill and contested early on. But we've got some engagement going on on the top side, the FFO Fusiliers engaging the Forksdeutsche, Legionary engaging the Geniste. With their Morettas and that Molotov, they can be incredibly strong at the 150 meter range. Nice kill by the Stug 4 though. That looks like Mimil playing a little bit careful on that top side. On the bottom side has managed to get his legionary into position here. Uh, they will make short work of the Fusiliers, maybe not so much the Geniste. 233 looking for the kill onto the Daimler. Misses its first shot. Daimler gets the shot on target. 233 misses its second shot. Accuracy there not in favor of Yuri, or sorry, of Mimil whatsoever. Now we see the Spitfire Mark V coming out, the first of the nice planes that the CIABG get to offer. Oh, lovely kill there. Crusader AA takes out the SS Legionary, but the 233 finding the kill onto the Cromwell V. Whilst these Cromwells are very useful and very fast, they don't have the best armor. And you can see here the 233 taking advantage of that to find the kill. The Stug 4 also getting shots onto the Cromwell in the mid. Volksdeutsche in the meantime killing off the FFO Fusiliers. Literally going to be moving forwards engaging the Geniste. The Stug 4 up on top has taken out another of these Daimlers. Mortar fire coming in from Yuri will definitely help pin down some of those units. Allowing him to get the better of them. But it's not a position where he can surrender 
these legionaries because they are fanatical. They have a fanatical trait which stops them from surrendering. So even if you were to fully pin units on the top side with that mortar, it's not necessarily uh, going to be enough to break them down. Uh, the legionary will ha um, have to be completely killed by something like the genies do. The Flamivurfa actually really clutch here. Pushing the Genistir out of the building will make them take a lot more damage from the SS Legionary. And you can see that taking effect there as the Genistir get completely cut down. The 81mm mortar coming in, pushing back the Panzer Grenadiers. On the bottom side though, things looking very, very good for Mimil. He's got a really nice position up here on the hill. The Spitfire is going to live with the 37mm firing at it. The Cromwells going down in the mid will open up play for the 222s. He's brought in the Alftadas, he's dropped them off using the 222 as their transport to try and get some pressure here. Volksdeutsche versus Fusiliers at range. The Fusiliers able to use their machine gun at this range because they do have an automatic rifle as opposed to a light machine gun. The Volksdeutsches will want to fall back just a little bit there to get their light machine guns on target. But yeah, the 222 is going to be coming in here. Getting lots of damage down onto the Fusiliers, onto the Genis there. There's also the Pioneer Fjorda here, which is giving these extra veterancy and two star fan Panzer Grenadiers are going to be incredibly good. Now look at the Stug 4, that is pushing forwards aggressively. And Tanner can't put his Genis there up on this hill. He's actually given them a reverse order, which is strange for trucks. Uh, but yeah, this Stug is definitely taking advantage of all of those armor kills that Mamil has found early on. So really, really good job. Uh, Legionary coming in to reinforce his top side. Tanner trying to use his Churchill 7 now to get the job done. He has managed to get that into the town and it's going to be able to provide decent fire support against the infantry. The question is can he keep it away from Panzerstrex because the Churchill 7 is extremely slow so it will suffer if those infantry run it down. Speaking of running it down Mimil is pushing very hard with the Legionary right now and the 222s getting the Molotovs on target here is going to completely pin the Geniste and the Fusiliers swiftly follow causing a double surrender. Now we've got infantry coming in on the bottom side. Nice aggressive play here from Mimil pushing the Flammenwerfers up over this flag. The Volksdeutsche in the meantime looking for another flag further back. The Geniste here not able to do much other than potentially prevent these Volksdeutsche from getting into the town. Daimler not in position to get the transport snipes either so a big misstep here from Yuri on the bottom side not getting the right position or the right units in at the right time. Now something that I didn't get a chance to mention so far in this game is that both players are playing Juggernaut, which is extremely rare in a 1v1. Uh, but maybe it was some sort of gentleman's agreement, I'm not entirely sure. Regardless, they neither will be able to leverage their income later in the game to make a comeback. And that is probably the most important thing about them playing both Juggernaut. Juggernaut itself though, very strange. The Volksdeutsche here not going to be living long as all of the flamethrowers open up onto those. But now Mimil going to be well aware that there is those three flaming units in that town. So probably not going to push so deep for them anymore. But instead, reinforcing his top side, Stug 4 coming in, Panzergrenz, Volksdeutsche. Yuri here is getting more Cromwells on the map. But so far, it's really been the Mimil show. He's done a fantastic job breaking down the early armor of Tanner and it's left him out to dry. Uh, so now the 233 continuing to apply pressure. The Flammivirf is actually winning and surrendering that unit. Now the 233, it does get taken out just in time before it gets a shot off. At that range, very likely to actually hit, maybe not necessarily penetrate, uh, but something like the Crusader AA Mark II there would have been in big trouble. The other 233 here was just taken out by the Churchill 7. So those pesky recon vehicles being broken down, still a ways to go. What Tanner really needs to do is make these Cro these Churchills and these Cromwells get value against the Stug 4s, and that is a lot easier said than done. The Stug 4s, they have 100 millimeters of frontal armor. It's going to be very difficult for both the Churchills and Cromwells to basically penetrate them from range. On the top side, Panzerschreck looking for the Cromwell 
it looks like the Churchill potentially was dealt with. I think that's the same one, maybe. So no, that Churchill's still good. But yeah, you can see that Mamil here trying to use his infantry AT to get the better of his opponent. Now we see that because the Crusader AA survived the 233, it is going to be able to force off the JU87 that would have been coming in for the Churchill 7. But now the Daimler is dead. The Genistier are getting pinned down. This is actually kind of a risky position. That's a crew panic as well. There's potential for surrender there. Now a Panzerschreck is zooming up onto this hill, being used very aggressively. Going to be looking for the Crusader AA kill, I think most likely, is what he wants to get. Because then he can use his JU-87 to kill the rest of the armor. This is something that I think a lot of people kind of fail on when they're new to the game is like the critical thinking of what do I need to do next in order to enable my other units. And in this case, his Panzerrecht, yeah, it gets a Cromwell kill, but killing the Crusader AA and taking away the enemy AA would actually mean that he gives value to his aircraft, and then his aircraft can come in and do the rest of the job. And therefore, you're only getting like efficient kills out of the rest of your units. But here come those surrenders, the Volksdeutsche managing to get up on top of the Genistier and pin them down okay, within 100 meters. Well, I think it's like 120 meters and uh, find the surrenders the Stug is still engaging the Churchill 7 looking for that low chance of penetration the Cromwell 5 meanwhile has found the flanking shot and with the Stug 4 having to back off and the Churchill 7 having fired so many shots already it was extremely accurate and found itself a side shot after the Cromwell 5 so the Churchill taking out the Stug here but Mamil in a really, really strong position. Panzerstreck creeping up on the Cromwell 5, takes it out. This is absolutely devastating for Yuri Tanner. He hasn't really managed to leverage any of his armor in this game. That Stug 4 kill is a good one, and he must have killed one of the Stugs up here earlier, but ultimately he's lost a lot more armor, and these Cromwells just haven't been cutting it. They again, once managed to get a side shot onto the Stug 4 there, the Cromwell 5. Now we see the Churchill 7 coming up. But at this range, these units actually have some sort of penetration. And any penetration that they don't have uh, will cause suppression. And so that Churchill is not going to be having a good time. And another penetration causes a crew panic. That is not good news. Volksdeutsche actually getting dangerously close. Couple house hops, and that's a Panzerfaust on target. Surrender pushes the last infantry off the hill. For Yuri, and this is looking really, really bad uh, for Yuri Tanner. 19 to 5 in a juggernaut versus juggernaut matchup. In well, we're now in phase B. <laughs> but yeah, that is very early for there to be such a decisive swing in the game. Just so many kills going in favor of Mamil. This is a lot of FFO Fusiliers coming up on the top side. But the trouble is, whilst this will give him probably the town back, the town only has two flags. And he's so much further behind than that. So it's not going to be enough. And he's only got three minutes and 12 seconds left on the clock to bring this game back. With the Churchill 7 falling back, these two Cromwell 5s, uh, tried to come in for the flank. Do manage to find the kill on the Stug 4. This recon Cromwell coming in from the other side is actually really well timed. There's going to be a nice Cromwell ambush. The 3 versus 3 ends up 2 nil. Or sorry, 2 <laughs> 1. Or 3 1 in favor of Yuri Dana. Make that 4 1 as the Churchill takes out the 2 2 2 as well. So he is managing to take back some kills here and get a bit more value back in his favor. But it looks like Mamil here is just going to be starting to put up a brick wall as he brings up a couple of Sturm Pioneers with the Panzergrens and is going to hold the line in that town as long as he needs to. What Mamil can do, since he is so far ahead on tickets, is he can pretty much sacrifice units onto these flags to hold them and it will make it very very difficult for Tanner to take back the ground he needs in good time. 
Like he's now got four minutes left because he's broken the triple tick, but it's still a double tick and that is not where you want to be at this point. You've got a Jagdpanzer coming in on the side of Mamil. That's going to be extremely difficult for the Daimler and the Churchill 7 to deal with. In the town, meanwhile, the Churchill 7 is still providing good fire support. Mamil struggling to get infantry AT on target there. The Stug might potentially have penetration close up, but I think uh, Tanner would, or sorry, Mamil would be worried that the Stug can also be penetrated at that range. But here comes the JU87, absolutely devastating strike as he gets both the Churchill 7s in one run on that top side, taking away a ton of armor. He's also got the JU87 coming in on the bottom side. Another Churchill 7 going down on the back side of that. The Spitfire running out of ammo, not able to finish off the kill onto the JU87. That was huge. Both of the JU87s finding two Churchill 7 kills each and absolutely dashing the hopes of Tanner in this game. However, this push with the Fusiliers might buy him some time. It's going to bring the flags back to 15-9. That doesn't stop the double tick though. He's going to have to get this FO Fusilier on target, but the Panzergrens are going to force them to unload. And they're going to lose some men in the process. Volksdeutsche engaging the FO Fusiliers. Looks like the Flak 36 able to take out some of these Fusiliers in the open. If he manages to cut down all of these, Mamil's still going to be in the driving seat. We've got converted RAF now coming in for the town on the top side. Brings it back to 14-10 for the meanwhile. Nice work here by Tanner to get this much ground back in such a short amount of time. Very, very nicely done. But I'm not sure that he's really going to be able to recover from not having those Churchill 7s in position to support these pushes. Because you can see that whilst these F4 Fusiliers have found their way into the lines of the mill very deep, it's not really going to last. The Flag 36 is going to take out the F4 Fusiliers. The Volksdeutsche are going to be cleaning up the F4 Fusiliers over here, potentially taking more flags back, and we're already back to a 15-9. In the town, the converted RAF, with these F4 Fusiliers still trying to work their way through the brick wall that Mamil placed here. These Stern Pioneers just sitting in ambush mode. Waiting for anything to get close enough so that they can flame it and kill them with the MP40s. The Stern Pioneers will likely be overrun by the sheer amount of numbers here. But it's just all a matter of time right now. And time is not something that is in the favor of Yuri Tanner. The Jagdpanzer coming back to help deal with these Cromwells potentially. We've got another Stug 4 on the way. That's a nice cool in. Make sure that this Jagdpanzer is less vulnerable to being flanked. We've also got the Pack 43 Krupp in position. And that's going to be able to start shooting these Vickers HMGs as they try and come across. BF-109 coming in for the 210mm rocket strike onto the FO Fusiliers. Spitfire looking for the kill, not quite finding it. Spitfire has amazing agility, so it can swing around very, very quickly if it's micro correctly and get on target. It's coming back for the kill, but I think the BF-109 will be okay. But another double kill for the JU-87G1. Absolute devastation once again as Tanner loses two more tanks to these aircraft. And I was talking about earlier making sure that Panzertrek found the Crusader AA and it left the air completely wide open for Mamil to come through and kill those tanks with those j 7s Huge play. Now Yuri finally starting to break down the units in the town, but it's cost him so many infantry to do this. And he's only got 30 seconds left on the clock. He's going to be looking to bring this back down to a 14-10. That will give him an extra 30 seconds or so to get infantry towards a 12-12. 12-12 would stop the tick, give him a breather. But I don't think Mamil's going to sort of take the foot off the pedal. He's going to really just bring in everything he can to secure as many flags as he needs to get the job done. And it looks like with that... Mamil is going to be taking the first game of this semi-final in the Steel Division League Season 10. So congratulations to him. Very well played. Very nice trades early on. 17 minutes, 48 seconds it took him to get the job done. You can see this in the kills and losses. 1,950 kills to 1,245 losses. Such a massive KD. 
uh, makes a huge difference in a mirror match of income. So two juggernaut players going up against each other and unfortunately Tanner not really finding value out of all of the Cromwells that he bought and the Churchill Sevens. Whereas if we go to Mamil's kills, you can see that he did extremely well with those two three threes early on. The SS Legionaries were really dealing with the Fusiliers well. The Panzertrek found very, very important kills, which enabled the J-87s to come in and find tons of Churchill kills plus Cromwell fives. Incredible stuff. Really, really good game. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you guys in game two of this best of three series. Goodbye.